Hey peoples, this is my list of the top 10 worst movies of the year. Now, pre-warning, I did not see every bad movie this year, so Cats is not on my list. I just did not want to put myself through that pain. But I'm sure next year, as this channel hopefully continues to grow, that I will be forced to go see more bad movies for your enjoyment. But just for now, so you know, I didn't see every bad movie. I avoided some of them. So some of them will not be on my list, but you can absolutely tell me your worst movies that you saw down in the comments. Also, one more thing, spoilers for everything. I'm gonna talk a little bit about each movie and why it just sucked. And spoilers for everything, you shouldn't see these movies. They're garbage or they're nonsense. But anyway, so the first movie on my list is Fast and Furious Hobbs and Shaw. This movie is straight nonsense and it's aggravatingly stupid. So the movie is about Idris Elba being basically superhuman. But as we all know, everyone in Fast and Furious is superhuman. Idris Elba has nanotech in his body and he can basically punch a car. But for some reason when he punches The Rock and Jason Statham, they don't instantly explode. They should, but they don't. We have The Rock jumping out of windows without a parachute, just landing on someone. We have the most stupidest ending in any movie where they're hooking up a bunch of cars in order to pull down a helicopter in one of the worst fight scenes I've seen in any movie this year, which is where they're in this industrial location. The ground is black. The buildings around them are black. There are smokestacks that are black. Everything is black. It's horrible for a fight situation. It makes no complete sense. This movie is so bad and it makes no sense and it doesn't really connect to any of the other fast and furious movies because there's one line in there where the rock says something like oh i know the best tech guy we can go visit to help us with this tech situation and if you're a fan of fast and furious your first thought is of course ludicrous nope nobody else is in this movie from the previous films it's just the rock and jason statham i guess they're phasing out everyone else even though there's supposed to be another fast and furious coming out but wh whatever, this, this movie was just a bunch of stupid. Now moving on to number nine, we have Charlie's Angels. This movie was also frustrating to watch. The characters aren't enjoyable. The movie doesn't know what it wants to be tonally. There was maybe one good dialogue scene in the movie which seemed to be very funny, but all of the other comedy does not work in this film. The weirdest part is that they make our main character a murderer. It's a small part in the movie and it's used as a joke, but our main character definitely killed someone and I'm supposed to root for them? Just a very odd choice for the movie. But yeah, this movie's just stale. The plot's stale, the characters are stale, nobody's really engaging, You just it's just boring. And they try to create this somewhat camaraderie at certain points in the movie, like, oh, they're really bonding. But you don't get any of that. You don't connect with these characters and they don't show the time that they connect to each other. So I don't get the point of that whole camaraderie section. It's not real, it feels fake, it feels forced, and it feels rushed. So overall, I just didn't care about the movie by the end. I do hope Elizabeth Banks does well on her next directing venture because I do like her. She was really good in this movie. I like her overall in most things that I see her in. And I would love to see her become a great director. I don't think this one worked for her, but I hope for her to have the best, you know, in the future. Next on the list, we have a movie that I'm sure most of you have never heard of, and it is the movie called After. This is a teen romance movie in the vein of your Twilight, but a lot worse. And I'm not saying that Twilight is bad because I have fun with Twilight. There's nothing fun about this movie. Our main character is at a school and she meets this mysterious guy and he's so smart and mysterious and cool, but she has a boyfriend and she definitely cheats on her boyfriend with this guy and goes on with this charade for a very long time. Even when her boyfriend comes to visit her, she leaves him in the middle of the night and goes and hangs out with this mysterious guy. And we as the audience are supposed to root for her for some apparent reason. Even when her boyfriend finds out, she pretty much gets over it pretty quickly and goes back with this mysterious guy. And the reason the guy even got with her doesn't make any sense. There's a revelation at the end of the movie talking about, oh, you think I can't get her as my girlfriend? You think I can't make her fall in love with me? It was a random thing that he said and no one even asked him to do that. There is absolutely no chemistry between either two leads because they don't show us any of their conversations. We get little montages of them hanging out, but, but they have nothing in common, not one thing in common. So you don't care about the relationship whatsoever. It's a pointless movie. Moving on. My number seven movie is 47 meters down uncaged. 
I liked 47 Meters Down, even though a lot of people didn't like it. Now, I will say that the beginning of that movie is kind of rough. It's just the setup does not really work that well. It's just bland. But once I get down into the water, it gets very intense. It had me on the edge of my seat. I really enjoyed it. This movie does not have any intensity. It has a bunch of jump scares. It involves an albino blind shark. But there's not just one. There's more than one and it has very annoying stupid characters and that's what we're forced to watch for the whole movie just people trying to avoid a blind shark that's it and m most of the movie like 90 percent of the movie is just close-ups of people's masks and then close-ups of them from behind watching them swim through the dark that's 90 percent of the movie the rest of the movie is the shark stuff but they take so much camera time showing people's masks and their face speaking of their masks for some reason the characters can talk to each other but they don't have mics there's no mics in the scuba gear or whatever they're wearing it just doesn't make sense and they don't even try to explain it or fake it or anything like oh good thing we have these receivers in our ears there's nothing in their ears their ears are out in the water but for some reason they can communicate with each other and the movie never explains that it's a stupid movie with stupid characters everyone in this movie was annoying my next worst movie coming in at number six is rim of the world now rim of the world is our first netflix film on this list it involves a bunch of annoying little kids specifically one kid that i believe the movie thinks is the comedic relief but he is not he's very annoying he's this rich little kid who's self-absorbed and narcissistic and you don't like anything about him and i won't throw all of the shade on the kids because even the grown-ups in this movie aren't very good the dialogue is not very good nothing's fun nothing's enjoyable it's a very very rough rough setup of this movie like when they come in the kids are coming into camp and they're introducing every single person it's just so rough all of the dialogue is corny they're trying to make jokes but it's not working what i will give them credit on is that the alien portions look pretty good i like that part i mean it's not on like some i am mother level which is also on netflix but it's pretty good for the most part i'd say but the character decisions make no sense the dialogue makes no sense the characters are super annoying you don't care about anybody in this movie i wanted all of the kids to die like in the first 15 minutes i was like all of these kids could die i could care less because they're all annoying but yeah i have nothing else to say about this movie it's just it's just really annoying like this is probably the most annoying movie on my list but moving on next on our list coming in at number five is six underground this is the most Michael Bay film I've ever seen in my life. The intro to the movie is a near 15 minute long action scene. It is so long. It's so long to the point where I had a friend text me when they started the movie and said, is this scene the whole movie? That's how long that action scene lasts. The continuity errors in this movie are at an all time high. Right when the movie starts, our driver has on a hat, then he doesn't have on a hat. We have scenes where cars are chasing each other and you look through a car window and outside their window there's definitely grass but when they do an overhead shot they're definitely in a city so it doesn't make any sense also you have the most cuts i've probably seen in any movie in the longest time there are so many action cuts that you don't know what's going on it's the most aggravating thing to watch no one wants to see a bunch of action cuts in a movie it makes no complete sense you can't understand what's going on in a scene even when people are fighting there's so many action cuts but back to the continuity issues there's a section in this movie where the main characters are about to storm a boat okay so it's basically around two three o'clock in the afternoon that's what the sky looks like they get on the boat and all of a sudden it's nighttime when they do an outside shot then all of a sudden it's early in the morning then a couple minutes later we're back in the afternoon what happened here what happened here continuity was just all over the place but even if you take that out the characters are not enjoyable ryan reynolds is the main actor but sometimes he's the character they tell us he is and other times he's just ryan reynolds so he goes in and out of his character you don't care about any of the other characters because they claim to try to give them backstories but they really don't this movie starts out by telling you that these people are ghosts they have faked their own deaths and they did that so they can go attack the dangerous people of this world without any repercussions and stuff like that they start the movie off with that an hour into the movie they're still talking about the same exact thing 
This movie has a plot, but it's so very, very thin. Also, this movie has to have the dumbest bad guys I've ever seen in my life. The bad guys in chase scenes will run into oncoming traffic for no apparent reason. They will be on the second story of a building, looking down at the good guys and trying to get at them, and they'll just drive off of the second story onto the ground, and their car will crash. I don't know what they thought was going to happen, but it's just nonsense. So my theory is that all of the bad guys are blind in this movie, but mostly this movie is just stupid. Completely stupid. Moving on. Our next movie is also from Netflix. It is called Rattlesnake. So this movie starts off like a few other Netflix films this year with a bad parent. It's a mom and her daughter driving to a destination and they get a flat tire. So the mom is trying to change the tire, but she allows her daughter to just roam around in a field. That's when her daughter gets bitten by a snake. The mom freaks out and then she takes her to this random lady's house and leaves her there while she goes to try and change her tire. Again, bad parenting. So when the lady comes back to get her daughter, she doesn't find the lady. She doesn't scream out for the lady and say, hey lady, where are you? None of that. She just grabs her daughter and moves on. And her daughter is apparently well when they get to the hospital. Then ghosts start appearing in this lady's life or apparitions, whatever you want to call them. People who don't look dead, but they're definitely dead. And they say, you have to kill someone because the lady saved your daughter. So this is, you know, payback for what she did. You got to pay it back. We can't just be out here saving people for no apparent reason. We need to, you know, equal it out. So the movie is about her finding someone to kill. She finds someone to kill. And then the movie is about that. That's it. There's nothing else in this movie whatsoever. Even the ending where she goes to kill the guy. It seems like the evil lady at the beginning of the movie is helping her out. So if you could help her out, then why not just kill people yourself? It makes no sense. It, none of it made sense. None of it made any type of sense. What's the purpose of her having to kill someone because you saved her daughter? Just don't save her daughter and then everything will stay even. Do you just get kicks off of having people kill other people? Just I just need to know why. That, that was the main issue of this movie. Why was this a thing? Why did this lady want this to happen? I didn't understand and no one understood. This movie makes no sense. Next on the list, we have Earthquake Bird. Now, I'm sure 99.9% .9 of you have never heard of this movie whatsoever. It is on Netflix and it is bad. It is very bad. It is about a woman in a foreign land and she is a translator. And another lady goes missing who she was friends with and she's accused of murdering the lady or doing something bad to the lady. Now, this sounds like a good setup, like, oh, we're going to get a mystery. Nope, it's not about that. It's about our main character falling in love with another guy. Here's the problem. Our main character is very stoic, a lady of few words. She's just bland. The person she's falling in love with, you would think to make this an interesting movie, he would be the exact opposite. No, he's the exact same way. He is very stoic. He is very bland. Do you know how boring it is to watch a movie with two stoically bland people? It is so boring. Oh my goodness. This was the most boring movie ever. And you know what? That would be okay if the movie wasn't also confusing as well. The movie throws in other things like our main character getting a rash and you think that means something. Also our main character having a dream about her making out with her friend, but then also making out with her boyfriend and her boyfriend making out with her friend. All of them having a threesome. And then later on our character starts seeing people. So is she seeing ghosts, but it only happens maybe once. What is going on? What is this movie? And also the title, Earthquake Bird. There is an earthquake in this movie, and then after the earthquake, you hear birds. That is the relation to the actual title of the movie. Other than that, I have no idea how the title relates to the rest of the movie. But anyway, back to the big screen, because we have our number two movie, and that is X-Men Dark Phoenix. This movie is absolutely terrible, and it is incredible that it is terrible because this is the third time we have seen this story. Three times. Still can't get it right. Still can't get it right. Just give up. Well, they, they have to give up because they got bought by Disney, but how do you fail three times? It's just so bad and so incompetent. One of the funniest scenes is in a small town, which even if you haven't seen the movie, you've seen this in the trailer. So Jean Grey is in this small town and the rest of the X-Men or the few that they have are approaching her. And they're like, hey Jean, you know, calm down. We're trying to help you. You know, you're freaking out. You're acting crazy. In the whole mess of it all, Jean Grey kills Mystique. Now how she kills Mystique is very important. What Jean does is she pushes Mystique away and Mystique flies and basically gets impaled by some wood or something like that. 
and then Jean Grey flies away. No one ever touches Jean because she has all the powers. So next scene we see her, she's crying and she has blood on her shirt. After that, we see that she finds Magneto and once she sees Magneto, Magneto's like, whose blood is that? Tell me whose blood is that? And then later on they say, Jean killed Mystique, but uh, she didn't touch her so, Whose blood was that? That's all I want to know. They never explain that whatsoever. None of it makes sense. It's like the director or writer didn't know the previous scene that just happened and they just completely forgot. Also, the villain in this movie has nothing to do. I believe it was Jessica Chastain in this movie as the villain and they give her absolutely nothing to do. Also, the dialogue in this movie is not the greatest. There's some social commentary that seems so cheesy. The writing is just corny at times. The best character is taken out of the movie and they never go back to him, which is Quicksilver. Of course, he's the best character. You gotta take him out because things would be too easy if you had him. The fights are uninteresting and not creative whatsoever. It's just sad that it's taken so many tries and they're still failing at this same story. But okay, that's number two. So. What is number one? What could number one be? Here's a hint. It was on Netflix and it was earlier in the year. Now this was one of the most frustrating and just horrible, bad, trash movies I have seen in a very, very long time. And it is the movie Sex Tuplets. Sex Tuplets is a Marlon Wayans movie and it is so, so, so bad. And this is not a bash on Marlon Wayans because here's the thing, I do believe Marlon Wayans can act. His last movie with Netflix, I believe was called Naked. That wasn't that bad. It does get kind of tired and repetitive around the maybe hour mark, if not a little bit before, but he's good. I actually like him. I remember the small portion he has in The Heat, which is an amazing movie, which I'm sure everyone has seen with Melissa McCarthy. So funny, love that movie. He's good in it. So you're showing me he can act, and I actually like him as a person, as a character, his personality. He's a natural on screen when he's not in his own stuff I guess but this is his own creation and it is horrible like it's so 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 bad there is absolutely nothing funny in this movie there's a bunch of stereotypes as well there are some super super corny jokes absolutely every single character is annoying you don't care about anything in this movie you're just waiting for it to end because it's so painful I'm amazed that it even exists it is probably my longest review I've ever put up and it's not even really a review, it's just a list of complaints because I had so many notes about this movie that I couldn't break it up and actually make it into a cohesive listening process. It's just all around a painful watch and I do not suggest that you watch that whatsoever. But anyway, that is my complete list of my top 10 worst movies that I have seen this year. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do me a favor. Tell me what your list is down in the comments. What did you see that I didn't see that you thought was worse than my list? What on my list that you think I was a little bit too harsh at? Like, did you like anything? If I had to give an honorable mention, Godzilla King of the Monsters was also almost on this list, so it'd be like number 11. But let me know your thoughts. As always, thank you for listening. Please continue to have a great day. God bless. Talk to you later.